Okay, hello and welcome to msdynamicsworld.com's fall 2013 webcast series on managing, managing your dynamic future. This is the first event in the series and we're really glad to have you all with us. I'm Jason Gumpert and joining us today we have Danielle Parks, Corey Johnson, and Chris Cognetta from Tribridge. As we get started today, I just want to add that we welcome your questions and comments during the presentation. We recommend using the Q&A block that you'll see on the lower right of the screen to enter your questions, and our presenters will answer as many uh, of those questions as they have time for. Uh, so without further delay, please uh, allow me to welcome the first of today's speakers, Danielle Parks. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate that. I want to start today off by letting you, um, giving you a little bit more information about our uh, CRM presenters today. We have Corey Johnson and Chris Cognetta. Corey is our CRM solutions consultant, and he has more than 10 years' experience with CRM. And Chris, who is our CRM practice manager, and he's also a dynamic CRM MVP. We have two great presenters, very experienced in CRM today, and excited to show you this new version. Let me just review a little bit about what we're going to talk about. Um, we're first going to cover the highlights of this latest version. We're going to cover the new and exciting interface, as well as how to use CRM on your mobile devices, marketing automation, and much more, as well as show you the new version. Um, we'll do a little preview of that for you. And then we're going to wrap up by talking about how you can prepare for this new version and providing you details on the next step. Um, all things that you need to know as you're planning your upgrade. So a little bit more about um, TriBridge. TriBridge is the largest Microsoft Dynamics partner in the United States. We actually have 650 team members spread across the U.S. And um, we have about 3,500 3, Microsoft customers. Um, we were named Microsoft Dynamics Partner of the Year for four years, this year being one of our latest, and proud to say that this is our 15-year anniversary this month. So um, before we get started and I hand everything over to Corey, though, we're going to launch a quick poll and then um, just to kind of get an idea of who's attending today and what you kind of know about where things are. So I'm going to hand that over to Jason to run and then Corey's going to take over. So we'll give you a few seconds to answer that question, and then we'll show you the results. That's right. We'll, we'll, uh, it's on the lower right of the screen in case anyone um, is looking for where to fill in their answers, and we will close this out in just a few more seconds here. Okay, that is closed and the answers are being tabulated. That might take another 10 or 15 seconds here. Okay, are you able to see the results? Um, it's, it's I'm, not I can I'm sort of take you through them. Let me just uh, maybe maybe talk through them then. I'm not sure why it's not displaying, but um, so it's it's a pretty evenly split um, answer. So 31% saying um, yes, they have uh, seen the Flow UI. 31% saying no, they haven't, and um, and then 10% saying not sure, and then the others um, who didn't answer. So very uh, very divided. Okay, thank. You. Okay, great. Well, thank you. All right, so good afternoon, and uh, thank you again for uh, taking some time out of your afternoon to look at the, uh, the this first look at Microsoft CRM 2013. And I'm, uh, again, this is Corey Johnson with Tribridge, and I'm very excited to be uh, presenting uh, today alongside with Chris Cognetta uh, from our team. So before we get going uh, on the uh, into the demo, I just want to talk a little bit about the background, about where Microsoft came from. and and where their head was at, so to speak, when uh, when they came to, to putting the, the system together that we're going to be looking at today. And Microsoft's kind of four pillars of investment and strategy were around making people 
uh, and users of the system more proactive, more productive, making the system available no matter where they were at, and also being uh, a flexible tool that, that works with your business needs and, and trying to cut down as many of the barriers and the, okay, this is the way we have to work because this is the way the tool works type of things. The way they've come about uh, that and, and the result of that has been a completely re-imaged uh, user interface. The, the look and feel, the imagination of, of how this thing should look is uh, pretty much completely different today than what we've seen in the past. And I've been working with Microsoft CRM for uh, since version one came out. And the user experience is the, has changed more in this release than in all the previous uh, iterations of, of CRM put together. Uh, the, the, the flow, the look and feel, the ability to use more real estate on, on the screens uh, has all been really brought, uh, brought center and forward, and, and we'll see that today. Uh, the idea of agile processes, uh, having different business rules put in different ways. The idea is, uh, and we'll see today, things like business rules uh, that makes the what used to be a JavaScript type of changes to the system available for a system administrator, a CRM administrator to do. Uh, things like, and we'll see today, uh, in the past where we'd want to put emphasis on a field or hide a field or show a field based on something else that's going on in real time on the form. Well, that in the past required customization, required code writing to do. Those types of changes have now been brought into the UI. So again, we're, we're flattening out the, the skill sets required to maintain the system and really making uh, the system administrator, the CRM administrator, a very uh, functional person with a minimum amount of, of skills outside of just what it takes to operate CRM on a day-to-day -day basis. The idea of accessing CRM where you want and when you want to see it. Microsoft has made huge strides in opening up the, uh, the, the availability of this uh, CRM beyond the traditional Internet Explorer type of environment. And uh, as we've seen with uh, the, the release in December of, of 2012, and again now, uh, whether you're on, you know, on an iPad, if you're on a Surface, if you're on a, on a portable device, an iPhone, whatever it is, we can get to the data within the application, and that's a real critical thing. As I've been talking to customers over the last, oh, six, eight, nine months, more so than before, the concept of BYOD, the bring your own device, uh, has become forefront in a lot of businesses' minds, and uh, Microsoft has really embraced that with this application as, as well. And then we have the idea of uh, enterprise-wide collaboration, so bringing in Yammer and activity feeds and really tying that information together in a way that has been uh, a long time in coming, I think, is, is great, and we'll be able to talk about and see that just a little bit more today. And then at the end of the demo, we're going to talk a little bit about platform enhancements. It's not all that easy to see uh, some of these things and, and show them in a really uh, interactive uh, demo, but we'll be able to talk through some of the things that have happened behind the scenes uh, that uh, have direct impact on your upgrade planning. And so we'll be spending quite a bit of time uh, talking about that at the end of the, uh, at the, uh, towards the end of the presentation today. So from a streamlined navigation standpoint, for the last uh, you know, 10 years, Microsoft CRM has had on the left side of the screen a, uh, or, you know, a vertical navigation bar with the workplace, sales, service, marketing uh, tabs, and then, you know, each of the, the sub areas has been a role within that. Well, with the new release of CRM, this is now a, uh, a drop-down menu at the top of the screen following much along the, the idea of the touch-enabled interface. It's a large button that uh, supports the touch environment, but it also works very well for, you know, for mouse work as well. Now, beyond this being a, uh, helping and make this a touch-enabled type of thing, we're able to now have much more horizontal real estate available throughout the forms and throughout the entities, so we're able to display a lot more information on that form view, which in the past would have required scroll bars, or really required us to open up each of the forms individually to get the information out. So this extra you know, horizontal real estate is, is tremendously valuable for, for a lot of day-to-day -day operations. In addition to that, we have uh, within our, our, our vertical bars, then we can drill in to see our actual individual toolbars. Uh, and as we can see here, I've drilled into the sales uh, module, which now we're seeing our accounts and contacts and opportunities laden across the top of the screen. The different entities are actually color-coded, so it kind of jumps out at us so we can see what they are. 
and we're able to further drill down and as you can see in this uh, screenshot here we've now got all of the recently viewed accounts right in front of us so for those of us that are that work with a, a specific set of accounts on a recurring basis this is a great way to, to pop into the records we're looking for and never have to go three clicks deep like we did in the past we had to go to the accounts and then into the view of accounts and then to open up the account record here we can drill directly into it uh, and it's just a very streamlined and fast uh, way of getting to it. What we also have at the top right edge of the screen, and you can see kind of the, uh, looks a little bit like a bullseye or a plus sign in a circle, there's a create button. The concept of quick create. Uh, we had this a little bit in the past, but it was awfully hidden. That now has been brought directly into the foreground. And this quick create function brings up a miniature uh, record form for each of the entities that uh, we want to work with. So we can enter the key information we want right on the fly. So if a phone call comes in, or if we need to create a new lead record, we're able to do it again right from, the, right from any screen that we're at and within the application uh, without having to navigate around to, to go find that. So again, a great enhancement in terms of uh, getting to what we want to see and, and getting there as we need it. So for those people that have not seen, and, and it sounds like there's uh, a plurality of people on the phone today that haven't uh, seen the new flow forms that CRM released with, uh, for CRM Online uh, in the last you know, several months, this has been the look and feel of a CRM record for about the last 10 years. It's, it's changed a little bit, but for the most part we've had, as we mentioned before, the vertical navigation down the left, we've had the form area in the front, and we've had that, that kind of basic look, and there's been some buttons on the top that have moved with the ribbon UI from 2011. But it's been pretty much a consistent look and feel for the last almost 10 years. Well, now what we see is that same form, but now split up. We've got a lot more white space in here, a lot more availability to see the same information, and a whole lot more coming together. And it takes a second to get used to it, but once you once you look at it and your mind can process what we're seeing here, you start to realize ju just how efficient the information is laid out and how valuable the information is that we're looking at. So what do we mean by that? Well, at the top of the screen and the top left, we have the uh, the the title, the the uh, the status. So what is this record about? What are we talking about here? To the top right, we have our uh, we have our header information, so why do we need to pay attention to it? What are the key elements that we need to see with this? That's the header information. Again, fully configurable. We can put whatever data fields in there that we want. So we're seeing exactly what's important to us on every record as we're opening it. Next down, we have our flow UI. And these are the specific steps and the specific procedures we have to follow within each step in order to move from uh, you know, throughout the course of this process. Now this flow UI has been enabled for every entity in CRM. With the December uh, release of uh, CRM Online, this is available for uh, leads, opportunities, and, and cases. This new flow UI is now available to be turned on for any entity in the system, including custom entities. And it can be turned off if, if you don't need to follow that, if that process isn't making sense for you. So again, putting the ability to configure and the information that you want to see in front of you as you need to see it has been brought into the, into the hands of every administrator of, of CRM. Yeah, Corey, and let me just add that also you yeah. can now link those process flows together. So you can link in multiple business processes as well as switch between them, complete one business process like a sale or opportunity pipeline, and then maybe jump back into the customer creation or support issue. Uh, they all can now be linked together, which uh, saves a lot of time and makes it much easier for a user to use the system. Great. And these also, uh, with these processes, and we'll talk about business processes uh, in just a moment, we're also able, beyond just linking back and forth, we're also able to do what's clo called closed loop uh, processes, which means, let's say, for example, in this opportunity record we're looking at, we create a quote or an order from it. When we go to close out that quote or if we go to process that order, and, and that converts to an invoice, that can then reach back to the opportunity and go ahead and close out the opportunity as one or, uh, or whatever it is. So the ability to go beyond entities, cross entities, and, and do updates is also new in, in, uh, with this new system. Then as we get to our bottom navigation pane, we have a basic three-section layout 
Our left side is what we're calling primary information. That's the, the basic details of what's going on within this record itself. In the middle is our socialization, the, high, the whole idea of enterprise-wide collaboration. Whether this is uh, a Yammer feed, if this is activity feeds, we're able to see what's going on with this opportunity. Any activities that we have, either open or pending for this, can be shown here. So again, just putting a lot of information here. Uh, I found that by displaying uh, the activity information on this, uh, on this middle section, it saves me having to click over to the activities area to the left. So again, we're seeing it all in one spot. And that, to me, is, is a great time saver for seeing what's next and what do I have to do here. And then on the right, we have our secondary information. So any stakeholders, contacts associated with this opportunity, what sales team or pursuit team is engaged, uh, just extra information we can store to the right. And this whole idea of different tabs, different column layouts is also, as we'll see in, in a couple of minutes, uh, completely reworked. So we've got a lot more flexibility in how we want these, these forms to be laid out. And then the very bottom uh, section, we've got our what's status of the record, so our status, which has uh, kind of been there for a while. But to the bottom right, we have something called, is this record saved or not? Well, we'll talk about this a little bit further going forward, but the idea of autosave has been brought into CRM. And as, we're, uh, as you know, you're getting familiar with other applications nowadays, especially mobile devices and so forth, the idea of having to save the record before you, uh, before you close out of it is, uh, you know, it's one more step that we really don't need to do. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty much understood. When I enter data, I want that data in there. So let's have the system be smart for us and, uh, and save the record. So this bottom corner shows us if we have unsaved or saved changes. And we have the ability right there, if we happen to want to go ahead and, and hit the Save button, just because we're not quite ready to give that power up yet, we do have that Save icon. So the floppy disk has not died completely yet. It's still in the bottom corner of the screen uh, if, we, if we want to use that. As I started to talk about a little bit ago, customization of the system has, uh, has been improved. This still has a bit of the look and feel of CRM 2011 and previous versions as far as the layout and the ability to drag and drop. All those functions are still the same as before. But what's added in is up on the top of the screen where we have our ribbons, we have the idea of business rules. And again, that's taken the JavaScript out of day-to-day -day operations and on-change operations and so forth within the form. What we also have is the ability to bring in other forms. So as we're migrating forward from 2011 to 2013, we, our old forms, our non-flow UI forms will be available, but behind the scenes, and we'll be able to bring those forms in and have them upgraded to the new flow look and feel uh, as, as is appropriate. In addition, uh, on the Insert tab, which is uh, kind of the next tab over, we can see that we have the ability to change our column uh, layout, much more sophisticated, uh, a lot more options for us from how we want to set up our tabs and our columns. And we're able to bring in things like Bing Maps directly inside, uh, directly inside the new forms, and we'll see, how that, we'll see how that works today. Now, we still have the ability to bring in web resources and iframes, just like before but uh, just seeing that we have expanded functionality beyond what was, what was there previously. And I'll also mention, if you look at the middle form, we do have our quick create forms. This is where we can create those additional forms, which we'll see in a minute for entering the basic information right on the, right on the fly before we uh, dr drill into a full form. We also, again, have with our tabs, uh, just like we saw with the columns before, we can, we can adjust our sections and our tab format. So just many different formats for how we want data laid out and uh, just really makes that a lot easier to, to pay attention to. All right. With the uh, process flow enhancements that have come forward, several different things, and we've, we've started to preview some of these before, but uh, these flow UIs, uh, the process flow is set up against all entities, standard and custom. We have the concept, as, as Chris talked about a minute ago, as far as cross-entity processes. So we can uh, start a process on the lead, and it flows through to the opportunity. It flows through to the order. And closed-loop processes, meaning that we're able to then sync back to our previous entity and close them out. So as we're uh, going with the order, the order gets uh, submitted to, to accounting. That can go ahead and close back and go back to the opportunity and go ahead and close it out or update the status or whatever it is. 
So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get ready for the, the live system demo. Now, as we're getting ready to, to kick this demo off here, there we are, I'm going to just uh, apologize in advance. We are, of course, looking at pre-release code, so uh, if something you know just makes its way magically into the into the application, that's uh, well, that's just part of the part of the live demo that we get to work with. Uh, but it's it's been very stable. It's been working really well for me so far. So here we go. Here is our first look at the new dynamic uh, dashboard that's in, in CRM. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about standard CRM functionality, which has been there through 2011. So the idea of you know, multiple dashboards and what accounts and contacts, you know, how they function, I'm not, I'm not going to go through that today. We can take a separate conversation. If someone would like to follow up on that, we're happy to do that. But we're just going to uh, focus today really on on the big changes that have happened from you know, from 2011 uh, Polaris release up till uh, 2013. So anyway, within our within our dashboard, the first thing that pops up as we're looking into the system, you'll notice again that left navigation screen is gone. We don't have our our ability to choose between sales and service and marketing and so forth. And what that has done is it's greatly expanded the amount of space we have available to us. So we can have more dashboard information. We can have more columns in our in our opportunity layout view and, and so forth uh, without having to you know move things around. But that information is now available on our top drop down bar. So as I move up to it, now I can see there is our sales service marketing functions just as before. And as we switch between modules from sales to service and so forth, we'll notice that the dashboards are changing. We have dashboards tied to each of the modules, our home dashboard. And so I was on the sales dashboard before, and we saw the, uh, you know, we saw the opportunity information in the pipeline. I switched to service, and now we have our service representative details. So again, just a great way of, of having what you need directly in front of you. And as always, we can set our default. So as we log into the system, we're seeing the persona that makes sense based on our role within the organization. Now from here, if we want to go ahead and change on our dashboards or change into our different modules, you can see I'm clicking into sales. Well, now here's all of my uh, standard entities that are available within the, within the sales uh, part of the system. We have our accounts, contacts, and everything. And I can scroll horizontally across, and we can see just everything building out as we go. Of course, this is showing all of our standard entities as well as any custom entities that are in the system. So just a great way of, of navigating here. We can quickly do this. And again, this is touch enabled, so it's much easier to uh, to work with uh, touch devices and touch screens as opposed to uh, uh, the 2011 release. Yeah, a good point to mention about the navigation is don't worry if you've had uh, CRM 2011 customizations in your ribbon bar. Uh, that customization XML is the same customization that will help drive uh, the same formatting. You use the same files, and uh, it'll just show up in the new navigation. So hats off to Microsoft for not having to make us learn a new navigation uh, for adding these buttons. Absolutely. That's uh, one of the things that Microsoft has worked really hard for, and we'll see that as we go through upgrade planning pieces. They're, they've done a lot of thinking about, hey, let's make sure that we're not having to reinvent you know, a lot of code going forward, and we'll see that, how they've worked that over and over from uh, solution packages to the navigation ribbon to, to so on and so forth. Okay, and then again, within here, within my, uh, within my ribbon, I'm taking a look at the different accounts and contacts and opportunities. If I click the drop down here, now I can immediately see the accounts that I've recently viewed. I can drill into any of those as I need to. Same thing for contact. So uh, very easy to, to, to grab right into the record that I need to deal with at a, at a moment's notice. And we're not having to, uh, you know, to open up the account view or the contact view and then and get into it. Now one of the things I'm just going to show real briefly here, that the idea of Bing Maps interaction, this has been available since uh, the Polaris release, but this is really cool that any kind of an entity that has address information, as we can see here, an address field set up, we can have Bing Maps enabled directly within the entity. So uh, if you're doing service management work and you need to, dis uh, to dispatch people out to a location, or opportunities or, or uh, account records and contact records, of course, where we have address information, we can display the map directly in line in the entity. Now with this, if we click on the map, that goes ahead and opens up the regular Bing map record. And so now I've got all of the you know, regular Bing functions right within here, getting directions and nearby places and, and location relative to an airport and all those kinds of things are available again, directly from the starting point within, a, within the system. And again, this is standard functionality now, available directly uh, out of the box. We don't have to do 
any code writing to make this kind of functionality work. We're not even having to import web resources or any of those things. A uh, point and click type of functionality. The other big ticket item that I wanted to show just on the contact record as well as the account record and the user records is the idea of pictures. So if we wanted to bring in a photograph of, uh, uh, of this person, we can simply go out and, well, I'll grab Chris's uh, picture. Uh, just because oh, no. Don't do that. <laughs> well, Chris, you got a new name, too. But uh, okay. here we go. That's how it takes to, to go ahead and bring a, a, uh, an image file, a picture, uh, directly into a uh, directly into a contact record. Yeah, technically, there's been two new field types. There's been two new field types that have been added. Um, so when you look at the image avatar, image concept, there's an image that's uh, 144 by 144. So it's a little small. I'll call it an avatar type of scenario. Um, but you can use that for identifying products and things like that. Uh, and then the other field is actually the business phone. Uh, the phone field itself has been updated to a new type. And the phone teal now has the ability to do click to call. So uh, if Corey had Skype installed here or on his tablet, he could hit click to call via that and make a call out through Link or through Skype. Yep. And down at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, as I mentioned before, we made a couple of minor changes. I'll go ahead and I'll change out to the preferred phone method is phone. You'll notice right down here at the bottom of the screen, it says there are now unsaved changes on the record. The system is going to auto-save momentarily and, and collect that, that, that for me. But if I don't want to wait uh, until, the, until the save uh, auto happens, we can go ahead and just click Save, and now I've gone ahead and saved the record. So for folks that are wondering, where'd my Save button go? Again, down here in the bottom right. And it'll tell us immediately if there's a um, whether or not there is a save in progress, or if we have unsaved changes that need to be made. Right, and think of this a lot as how we use our cell phones today, in the fact that you might be typing an email or looking at a spreadsheet, and somebody calls you. Well. After they call you, you go right back. Your stuff is already saved. You've already been working there. So that's the whole new way of thought that why well, have to have users hit save? Why well, have to go through that? It's going to be a, a new way and a new uh, ideas on how to work with CRM. And uh, users are very excited about it when they see it. As you can see here, the system auto saved while Chris was, was talking. And our button's gone away. And now we're, we're, we have a saved record. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and pop back to my accounts view. And again, we still got our accounts view just like before. If we wanted to see our listing of accounts, we have all the same chart functionality that was available before. Uh, so we can see accounts by industry or, or whatever details we want to see. And we can drill into our records again just by, uh, uh, by looking at our recent actions as well. So again, just real quick able to, to get into our information as we want to see it. So again, that same functionality as Chris mentioned, the, uh, the click to dial within the phone number field the address uh, with Bing map interaction, as well as the images, uh, all available for us, again, throughout the, uh, throughout the different parts of the system. So let's go take a look now at some of the changes that have happened within the, uh, within the opportunity record. And as uh, actually, before I do that, the other one that I want to mention is our create function. So top right corner of the screen, we have our option to create uh, new records of whatever record type we're looking for. So if I wanted to create a new lead, here we can see the, uh, the Quick Create form uh, loads up. And now we have our basic details of the form. Very compressed, very straightforward, what information we need to collect in order to, to process this. So okay. get our details in here. Okay. And we go ahead and we save it. And that's all it takes to go ahead and create that. Now, you'll notice on the top right here, as soon as this lead is created, it tells us it was done. And then we have the ability to view the record if we want to or to create another one. And since I didn't take action, it went ahead and, and moved off the screen. So the concept of save, save, and new, they're all still there, just a little bit different in, in how they're presented to us. And again, it just makes it a very clean uh, way of looking at this. And we don't have to explain quite so many times uh, during training, you know, what's the difference between save, save and close, and save and new. The system kind of takes care of that for us and just takes one of those extra administrative burdens and training burdens away from us. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to open up uh, one of our opportunities. And again, this is the new uh, Flow UI look and feel. We have a lot of different functionality that's happened within this uh, within this record. So as we're looking through this screen, we'll see a couple of things that uh, have, have uh, transpired here. First of all, we have our new flow 
uh, process flow ribbon. And as uh, Chris talked about before, this can be turned on, it can be turned off. We can uh, have this go throughout different uh, entities, standard and custom, as well as it can link between multiple entities. So lots of functionality has come in here, and it really just drives home the concept of let's make sure as we're, we're working this opportunity through the pipeline that we're taking the proper steps at the proper times in order to get our best chance of success. To the right here, we have our, our key header items, and again, these are configurable. We're able to drill down on these. So, for example, the owner information, we can drill down and see the details for that. So, a lot of information, key details right in front of you in a way that makes sense. As I scoot down into the system, we can see the, the primary level information, which is uh, just to the left of the screen here. And one of the things that we talked about is the idea of business processes and process uh, business rules. So if we look here, take a look just for a moment at these four fields on, the, on, this, uh, on this section here. So the rating right now is warm. My estimated close date, my estimated revenue. I'm going to go ahead and delete that out for right now. You'll notice uh, are just not business required at all, and there's no content here. If I go ahead and I decide, though, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and ch change this rating to hot. As soon as I did that, you'll notice the system went ahead and it changed the requirements. Now the estimated close date is required, the estimated revenue is required, and it dropped in a description message asking me to, yeah, let me uh, hold the mouse here for a minute, to enter an extended description for the opportunity. So again, this kind of functionality in the past would require JavaScript writing. We were able to do this through simple configuration just like we do with uh, workflow rules, and just like we do with screen configuration, and I'll show that in just a minute. So from here, I'll go ahead and I'll put my uh, estimated revenue in there. And I got my description. So now I've gotten the items taken care of. We're able to go ahead and either save it or wait for the auto save uh, for that information to take place. Our new posts area, of course, is showing right now these are activity feeds. This could also bring in and show Yammer if we're using Yammer within the organization. As I mentioned before, though, this is also where we can see the activities. The, uh, open phone calls, tasks, and appointments associated with this opportunity are now showing in one spot, as well as notes if we wanted to, uh, to have our notes about the system. Again, just in um, in one spot, so you're able to see it very efficiently. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, and you guys will notice that we don't have pop-up boxes here. Everything is in line in the form, uh, which makes it much more performance-oriented, uh, as well as a uh, nice look and feel for the users, uh, not having to worry about these uh, multiple windows popping in and out. Yep, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and make a phone call. I didn't receive the, uh, I didn't get a hold of uh, Maria in this case, so I'm going to go ahead and leave a voicemail. Again, right in line, no pop-ups. There we are. That's our activities that quickly as far as uh, you know how we how we get that information. Over to the right, we have <clears throat> stakeholder information, and this is just a, a basically a lookup to, to contacts within the system. It's a connections link. But if you'll notice, there's something else enabled here now: the idea of inline editable grids. So here I've got my uh, my three stakeholders. In the past, if I wanted to change how Jim was relating to uh, how Jim had related to this opportunity, I'd have to open up that contact or that uh, connection record, make the new, make the change, and, and close it out. Now all I have to do is click the drop down, and now he's an influencer. So inline grid edits, uh, again, just a, a tremendous time saver in how that works. Same functionality applies for like the sales team. So we have contact records in here associated with the uh, with this particular opportunity. If I'm going to change uh, you know, my role here from territory manager to account manager, that's all it takes, just a moment to do that without having to open up new record, uh, new windows or, or open up the connection window directly. We can also see that uh, that type of functionality, if I go down to my inline uh, grid here for products, you can see I've got a, a product listed in here. I can go ahead and I can change the number of products. We'll say we're bumping that up to 25. That quickly, we're able to make changes, again, in line to an associated record. Again, not opening up new records or anything like that. So real clean, real clear, crisp as far as uh, how, we, how we can interact with the, uh, with the different uh, parts of the system here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and, and, and take a look at – go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and the inline editable subgrids available in the product entity today, um, it will be available in the future for other entities. Um, 
you know, Microsoft has listened loud and clear that that's some functionality we'd like to have in all different places to be able to edit it right on the grid. So uh, expect to see many articles on when it's been added and uh, where it's available. So let's take a look at how we did some of the things that we just showed here uh, just briefly. So top of the screen, I'm going to go ahead and go into my uh, form editor. Again, I have admin rights to allow this, so not everyone can, can do this clearly. But within the, the form editor, I'm able to go ahead and, and do a lot of the same functions we did in the past. The couple of areas that I want to highlight, though, specifically are business rules. And so when I talked a little bit before, when I showed you how, to, how I made that estimated close date and estimated revenue business required, it was really just a matter of, uh, as I opened up here, giving out the, you know, what the condition is, what the action is, and then publishing. So I'll show you just uh, real quickly how we would create that new rule. So in the past, again, this would be JavaScript. We'd have to save it, pull it in as a web resource, create it as an on-change or an on-save uh, on event. In this case, I'll go ahead and I'll just give it a name, put in my condition, which in this case was if the rating uh, is set to hot. So I'm going to scroll down to rating. equals, and we can either create a field value if we want, or a particular value, so in this case I want it to be a value, uh, hot, warm, or cold, whatever it is, so in my case I said hot, and then I save that change, I give it the action, which would be, and it could be a display a message, which is how I had the description field show up, we can set certain field values here, we can set visibility so we can hide or show other fields based on what we're choosing, which is, a, again, a great way if you're looking at opportunity types and, and different opportunities have different levels of information we need to show. Uh, maybe if you're using a uh, responding to a proposal or a bid or something like that, you'd need to see certain uh, date fields like the bidder's conference or whatever show up or hide. Or on a case record, if it's uh, you know type, this type of case, we'd need to answer these questions. All those kinds of functionality, which again were JavaScript in the past, or a lot of a lot of different thoughts, doing it right here just by set visibility on the on the business rule. In my instance, I just set the estimated close date to be business required. So now I just go and find my estimated close date field and set my constraint level. That's how quick we can do these these kinds of changes. Uh, at this point, we would save it and activate it just like workflow does. I'm not going to do that because I've already got the rule here, but that's all it takes to go ahead and create that uh, to create that rule. Yeah, and, and talking about management and upgrading processes, you know, from CRM 4 to CRM 2011, you've seen how we've gone to the web resource model and storing our web controls and stuff inside of CRM versus the ISV folder. Same thing is going to hold true here with the JScript and going forward. You now have a place that you can do your JScript that will be supported for future upgrades. Um, versus having to go through and worry about, hey, we need to go through and update all of our code. So highly look at using this and to replace your JScript uh, from using the, the code uh, on the forms. It makes it much easier from an upgrade perspective in managing that process moving forward. Other things we can do is we can have managed, uh, you know, enabling security roles per, uh, per field brought in here, which is something that was available in 2011, just a lot more streamlined today. Bringing in another form, so as we talked about, as you migrate from 2011 to 2013, this is where we would bring in and upgrade our forms to the new Flow UI. Again, done directly in line here. And if I go to my Insert section, you'll notice we still have all the same functionality as before as far as bringing in iframes and, and so forth and web resources and, and whatnot. But here we have expanded ability to adjust our column layout, our tab layout. Here's where we can bring in our Bing Maps, and this again is a point-and-click operation. If we have an address function, uh, an address uh, set of fields on the form, and Bing Maps is activated, we come in, we drag, drop, and we're done. So very straightforward as far as uh, linking to other uh, to other systems. I will make mention though that Bing Maps will require a Bing Map key, so that is a uh, separate, and that's outside of what you get with the standard CRM operation. Uh, but really easy to get that once you have that key. Uh, it's installed and set up. This functionality works for everyone. And with that, that is kind of the down and dirty of the the basics of the CRM system. Uh, you know, some of the changes here. There's a lot more going on. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at what this looks like on a um, on a on a tablet type device. So Chris, are you ready to uh, to share out your screen? Sure.
I think you have to uh, select share for me. Uh, let me see here. On the team viewer or on the? Uh... No, uh, you can just show it on the. Um, what do you call it? In the meeting, in the panel. On the web. Oh, there we go. Hang on. There you go. That's your web accent. Can you see? Um, can you see my screen yet? No, I'm just seeing the system demo screen. Okay, let's see here. Top center of the screen should be under share and the sh share desktop. Yep. Got it. Sharing right now. Okay. Just let me know if you can see go. that, Corey. Yep, we got you. Okay. Proceeding. So let me just go back here. There we go. So, um, Good afternoon, everybody. So what, what you'll see here is what we call the Mocha app, which is the mobile access client for CRM 2011, excuse 2013. And it's uh, this is the actual application that's going to be installed through the Windows or uh, iStore. It'll be available for Windows 8 tablets and iPad uh, out of the box. Uh, you can see here as I uh, remote it into a Surface device, I have my Windows 8 running on my desktop. There will be a tile. Uh, I can launch that tile, and that immediately brings me into the sales dashboard. The sales dashboard is a view of my activities, my opportunities, leads, basically all your my views from CRM with your opportunities, et cetera, right at your fingertips. Um, the beauty about the new CRM 2013 architecture is what you build on your uh, website as far as your uh, screens and fields and forms in the web version, it'll automatically flow down into these web clients. So uh, that includes the JScript. Uh, workflows do not execute offline, so uh, you won't see workflows running, but you will see uh, JScript and, uh, and work that you have. As far as an offline mode, uh, there is a caching mechanism that will store an amount of the ones that you use. So if you know you're going to be going offline for a few hours, uh, you can simply go through and cache uh, the ones that you want to see and use, and then when you log back in, it'll recast those and connect. So um, so that's my navigation here. You'll see up on top left here, there is a, a little button with some buttons. If I click on that, uh, I now have access to the areas very similar to the pop-out style that you've seen today from Corey. Uh, I can click on accounts, and I can see uh, any active accounts that I might have. Again, opening up the account, and you'll see the account record is nicely laid out. Um, again, you do not have to go through and build forms for these accounts uh, to show up. That information is being uh, processed automatically based on what you're showing on your screen, and it's laying out uh, into the format that you see here. I can go back to the Home button, which will bring you back to the Sales. I can open up an opportunity, and you'll see across the top that I also have my bar, my Process Flow UI. So I will be able to see uh, the business process and work it, know where I'm working, identify the stage right here of what's happening, uh, and move it and, and work forward through that uh, right from my mobile device. Uh, another new feature of the mobile device is a multi-entity search. Uh, this capability is only available for the tablets today. Um, it will eventually make its way, I believe, into the product, but it's a search um, based on uh, all the quick find views. So uh, you can pull all the quick find views from up to 10 separate entities and it will pull up, uh, it'll pull up that information. So if I stick in Nancy here, you'll find Nancy and she's a contact. She has some lead information, et cetera. Uh, and you can obviously hit a filter or you can select where you want to see it individually based on those 10 different ones. So real nice functionality. Um, for the device that's out. So out of the box, these will be available uh, as, of, as of the release. And this is really what they're calling the mobility piece of it. Uh, you can look forward to uh, probably second quarter or later next year to see the releases for uh, iPad, uh, not iPad, but um, iPhone and the phone type of devices, uh, Windows Phone, et cetera. Uh, you'll see more stuff around Android. Those things are all becoming uh, in the future as, as a part of a different release. So. Um, that's a little look at the Mocha client, so you guys understand how it's going to be available, and um, hope you enjoy that. Cool. And Chris, if you want to go ahead and stop sharing, and I will see if I can take over as presenter. We'll go back into our to our follow up slides here for our upgrade considerations.
Yep, heading right there now, Corey. Okay, and let me grab you, make you the presenter. Excellent. There you, there you go. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Chris. So, again, as, as Chris just showed, we have some really powerful tablet applications available to us. Again, regardless of device, you saw just the, how, how slick the, uh, the interaction is back and forth and how things like the, uh, the multi-entity search and so forth are really actually leading the charge in functionality that uh, hopefully will make its way back into the regular application going forward. Again, beyond the tablet and the Surface, uh, it's also working on, on different applications, uh, Android, uh, and iPhone, and so forth, and that's, that's coming. As Chris mentioned, the idea of write once, deploy everywhere is included with, uh, with this new release, which means you're not having to build separate forms. They are touch optimized, and they're dynamically resizing for the different type of device we're working with, which again is a great way of, of reducing administrative burden and how many different types of things we have to support. Uh, we talked about and touched on the idea of embedded link and Skype operations. So uh, if I had had uh, the Skype connector installed during uh, the presentation today, when I hovered over the, the business phone uh, on the contact or uh, the, the main phone on the account record, that could have done a direct outbound dial uh, through, our, through our, our connections. And we talked a little bit about workflow. We, we spoke about it just briefly, but the idea of synchronous workflow, which means real-time workflow. We're not having to wait for the save event anymore for uh, changes that come in. Uh, we talked about auto-save, uh, which is really cool. Again, automatically taking that one of those steps out of the equation for us. And we, we talked about Yammer uh, as the ability to, to interact from an enterprise-wide, uh, uh, have enterprise-wide collaboration on different uh, types of events as they're going on throughout the course of our, of our operations. So a couple of tips for uh, moving from 2011 to 2013. First and foremost, uh, for anyone that's had any kind of customizations done within the system, uh, JavaScript writing, you know, custom plugins, whatever it is, uh, Microsoft has developed a custom code validation tool. Uh, we definitely recommend that uh, you get it downloaded and, and test your application to see what, uh, what challenges you might potentially be running into going forward. And that is certainly something that uh, we will, uh, as your partner, be happy to, to talk to you about and, and work through with you. One of the other big checks is having uh, the conversation with any ISVs that you're working with. Customizations that ISVs have produced uh, drive a lot of value into CRM. They extend the app in, in ways that uh, just go and that have a lot of value to everyone. But that also means there's changes that have to be looked at. So we need to to look carefully at how those uh, how those ISVs are preparing for the release. And finally, uh, for folks that are within CRM online, you know that uh, most of you have, have probably already received the email saying that the update is coming. You do have the ability to to request that that be pushed out. And so we want you to think very carefully about when that update uh, actually happens. Uh, we encourage setting up a development environment, roll your customizations into that development environment prior to uh, the main system upgrade so we can see what happens. And uh, folks that were around in, with CRM prior to the December release, you know, what, uh, you know how that kind of goes. So we do have the ability to, to work with you again to make sure that you're going to be successful as, as you move forward. Right, and just clarify on best practices there. Um, you have the ability to schedule your upgrade out. What we're recommending is you schedule your uh, production upgrade out as far as possible. Typically, it's 90 to 120 days. And then use your dev environment, allowing that to go live first so you can see any issues or challenges that you might need to overcome, whether it's ISV, uh, JScript, et cetera. You can also get your training program together to, to retrain your users on, uh, on how to use the new uh, navigation for CRM, and then you can schedule your go-live at that point uh, for, for production. So that's, uh, that's kind of the best practice as far as having both of those environments in place. Um, you know, the upgrade process has been optimized to go smooth. Um, there is a new feature that will combine the CRM, 4, uh, CRM 2011 extension and base tables together. So there will be a SQL merge, which is a really nice process. Um, you can postpone that uh, to, to make the process go faster, but that's going to give us much better performance in the long run and uh, help some of the CRM Online SQL challenges. Um, organization updates uh, will behave the same way we did the 2011 to 2012, uh, excuse me, from 24 CRM 4 to CRM 2011. 
Um, there's a question here on the panelists from uh, 4.0 to 2013. So you will have to go to 4 to 2011 to 2013. There's no upgrade path from 4 directly to 2013. Uh, unless you went to uh, like a third party utility like Scribe or uh, Microsoft SSIS to move your data from 4 to uh, 2013, which I wouldn't recommend. Uh, best practice there would be to create a little virtual machine running 2011, move your database over, and then upgrade to 2013. Uh, again, the checks that are out there, um, Corey, if you want to go to the next slide, we can talk about the uh, 4.0 stuff. And um, so from supported software perspective, you have, you know, 2008, 2012 servers, Windows 7, Windows 8, uh, ADFS 2.0 and up, SQL Server 2008, 2012, uh, Exchange 2007 through 2013, Outlook 2007 to 2013. A very key important part for planning and upgrading is you must be on update rollup 6, which means you just installed and you're out of the box, or you must be on update rollup 14 for the upgrade to work. Uh, so if you've been holding off on your environment and uh, your on-premise environment for uh, moving to uh, cross-browser capabilities, et cetera, you're going to be required to move there before you can initiate the upgrade. So you'll want to do that in your dev environment, fix your scripting problems, and then uh, be posed for an upgrade. Support has been discontinued for Windows XP, Server 2003, Exchange 2003, and IE7. So if you haven't taken the jump to Windows 7, uh, now's the time. Uh, you know, obviously Windows 8, as you as we were seeing, is taking over the marketplace. And uh, I highly recommend after using Windows 8 for a week or so, you guys can uh, jump right in. It's, uh, it's definitely uh, an improvement over where we were uh, in the Windows 7 in environment. So the next one, Core. So uh, legacy features, uh, you know, if you're already running on CRM, online, you won't have these issues because you cannot use uh, the 2007 endpoint, for example. Uh, those, that stuff's been deprecated as of the fall release. So uh, nothing new here. This has been saying since you migrated from 4 to 2011, you need to move over to the 2011 stuff. Uh, if you do have 4.0 plugins, you're on-premise uh, with custom ActFlow and client-side scripting, or you use the ISV folder, uh, those items are no longer going to be available. Uh, for CRM 2013, so you'll need to have an investment on moving forward those items into the 2011 model uh, where you utilize web resources uh, instead of the ISV folder, uh, as well as the 2011 plugin architecture. Uh, the solution down level tool was available that allowed you to take CRM online to CRM uh, on-prem organizations due to the difference in customization, uh, but that's now going to be baked into the product so you won't need that tool anymore. Uh, again, if you're on CRM 4 or before, run the uh, 2011 custom code validation tool. Uh, that will check to see uh, what's out there as far as your system and uh, allow you to know what you need to check and upgrade uh, before migrating to 2013. So solutions, uh, you know, solutions will still work the same way that they did in CRM uh, 2013. Uh, we'll have the capability to import 2011 solutions, although some of the items that are no longer available in 2011 will be stripped out. Um, the solutions are converted on the import, so once you convert them, you can't use them again for a 2011 system. Uh, and then those solutions are, will also take into effect the upgraded forms and the database updates. Both managed and unmanaged solutions are still available. Um, again, migrating stuff, you should, if you're not an ISV, you should be considering using unmanaged solutions versus managed as a best practice. Uh, importing solutions, obviously the performance uh, has been increased for CRM 2013, and now you no longer have to worry about which version of activity fees that you're running in which environment. Uh, the activity fees are completely stripped out of the solution import, so it makes it much easier when uh, not having that specific version or of the import when trying to do your upgrade. Oh, we skipped one. Uh, yeah, the, the slide we just skipped was, we already talked about that, just having your conversation with your ISV and working with your partner for all custom apps. Yeah, yeah. So it's already, uh, we're running a little late here, so why don't we jump into the questions, Q&A. Danielle, you want to bring up the questions? Yes, and there are a lot. So I'm okay. Get started. So our first one from Alex, can you turn on Flow UI on only a subset of entities, or is it all Flow UI or all traditional? Okay, so the flow UI that we're talking about is the process flow that's in the middle, okay? Um, that process flow can be uh, turned on and off based on which entity you want to turn it on and off. It doesn't have to be a certain set of entities. In Serum Online uh, today, it's, it's only available for what we call the COLA entities, which is 
case contact opportunity lead and account. Um, but that has been revised in 2013, and now you can use that within all entities and your custom entities as well. Your choice. Okay. Um, for ease of user adoption, can we switch between the new and old interface? Um, well, so the you cannot switch between the new and old interface. So from a 2013 perspective, once you go there, uh, you will no longer have the left hand nav. You'll have the top the top navigation bar. Um, you know, there's no way to go back and forth between the two. All right. Um, we don't use opportunities, but we have a lot of custom entities, which are linked to contacts. Where would activities be viewed, and where would these custom entity records be viewed? Right. So as Corey showed you on the uh, the activities show up in that little control. It's in the middle of the screen. That's where your activities will show up, whether it's a custom entity or not. Um, that control is not customizable. That's just where they're going to be viewed. Um, you can choose where it's displayed around the screen versus your columns, et cetera. Um, but other than that, that's how you can navigate to that. You can still do the navigation on the top nav bar and uh, click the little arrow next to the name as Corey was showing, and you can see all the activities that way as well. All right. And we did have some questions about um, transitioning from 4.0 to 213, but I do think that you covered that. You covered that. Yep, just to clarify again, um, Microsoft has always kept a, you know, current product, current product. So from 3 to 4, 4 to 12, 4 to 11, and uh, 11 to 13. So you will have, if you've been waiting on 4, it's not a problem. Uh, your partner can help you uh, by building a, a, a virtual machine and moving you to 2011. No one will have to be trained or used on 2011. It'll just be used to get to 2013, and the night of go live after that, you won't see it again. Okay. Um, does is the dashboard layout still limited to six sections? That is a good question, and I do not know off the top of my head. But Rebecca, I will will make sure we get that information back out to you. All right. Does uh, 2013 CRM Online support subscriptions and automated distribution of SSRS reports? So I assume you're talking about the report SSRS and reporting services and how you can go in and schedule subscriptions. Um, you can schedule reports, but uh, CRM Online, the access to the actual SQL Server is not available to you. So I would uh, suspect that many of those items will not be available to you. Yeah, in 2011, that was uh, restricted to on-premise customers, the scheduled reporting. Right. Yeah, and that's, it's, they're asking for online, so we're going to say no. And uh, Jim was wondering if you could talk to what's new with Dialogs. Uh, I would say the only thing that I know that's new with Dialogs is they don't pop out of the screen anymore. They're built and baked into the current screen. Uh, not a ton of work has been changed in the current dialog process today. Um, I may be wrong. I haven't spent a bunch of time in that area. But uh, there's nothing that hits me from the uh, Partner Blitz videos or any of that. How about you, uh, Corey? No, I was going to say the same thing. Aside from just where they show up, I, I've not seen a lot of work happen there. Yep, yep. You'll see that eight, over 85% of the screens have been changed in CRM. Uh, the back office screens, as you saw, are still a 2011 look and feel. Um, that will continue to evolve over time. The entire DOM that, you, that you've seen uh, as far as how it downloaded to the browser has been changed. So if you're doing any hacking or customization to the DOM, uh, looking at uh, variables that weren't exposed to you using special little hacks and tricks, uh, that will no longer work in 2013. All right. Um, I think in regards to the mobile aspect, um, somebody was asking about BlackBerry. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have not seen BlackBerry on the, uh, the the roadmap. I believe it was uh, shown on a roadmap at Convergence 2013. Um, as far as when it would be delivered, uh, I would have to say sometime after second quarter 2014 when the rest of the mobility suites come out. Given their statue and uh, what's happening to BlackBerry right now, I, I don't know how uh, how important that's going to be moving forward as a target. All right. Next, we've got our company uses counties to define our sales rep territories. Can Bing Maps do counties? Um, I would say that out-of-the-box functionality is based off of address. You probably would have to hijack uh, that, that code to add in your own code to call. 
Um, there's there's hundreds of explanations on how to use Bing Maps in CRM, even for CRM 2011. Uh, I've seen people do things with with countries or zip codes and uh, and counties. So it is possible, but it won't be available out of the box. Okay. Will the Mocha app for tablets also provide a method of viewing custom entities or just the standalone one? Standard one, excuse me, standard. Good question. And um, the Mocha app does provide the ability to view custom entities. Um, again, they're dependent on uh, your customizations that you have in the web app is what's going to be shown uh, in the Mocha app. Uh, the Mocha app will also provide, uh, like the JScript customizations that Corey was showing you through the business rules, they will also execute on the platform. And that and someone also asked about when, if, if, if it's uh, available for iPad and Win 8. And yes, it's available for iPad and Win 8 at the release in uh, October. Okay, great. Are there any new changes uh, or functionality with the Outlook integration that we should be aware of? As far as changes with the Outlook integration, uh, the Outlook client has been updated. Uh, the Outlook client used to use a single process thread. It now has three separate process threads. One is the original Outlook email where it goes and gets and receives its mail. The second thread will go off and uh, it will be strictly for accessing the web version of CRM and pulling back data. So when you click on an account, contact, et cetera, and showing that on the screen. The third thread will be used strictly for synchronization and the background task synchronization. So from a performance perspective, those have been changed. As far as the overall look and feel, it's still made to work within Office 2013, which uses the left-hand navigation. So from a user perspective, you won't see a ton of change there. The change will be is when you click on the open the record up in the website, uh, it'll still have the new 2013 uh, navigation. All right. Monica wants to know, can we use inline grid edits from a view and update multiple records? Their inline grid edits are available, but it's only uh, specific to that price list that we were showing there. Uh, maybe that will be unlocked in the future as far as being able to do that on multiple records. Um, but the inline edit and updating multiple records are two different things. Inline edit is changing that one field. Uh, the 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 grid type of scenario where you have a whole view, you can still use your bulk edit to do an update across those. Um, but no, you cannot use the inline grid edit across uh, multiple records like that. Not today. And I have a solution for that, Monica. Uh, we can talk about that offline. With the new exchange to Dynamic Sync in 2013, does this eliminate the need now to have the Outlook client to sync appointments, tasks, etc.? So the server-side sync is something we didn't talk about. It's one of those platform enhancements that uh, is uh, going to be a really nice feature for CRM users. Um, what the server-side sync does is it eliminates the email router. So it will give you a direct connection from CRM to uh, the, the Exchange web services. Uh, there are some constraints, like you must be using CRM online to Exchange online or CRM on-prem to Exchange on-prem. You cannot mix them up. If you're mixing them up, you'll still have to use the email router. Um, what it does is it breaks the dependency on having to have that email router and the synchronization in between there, and you now your Outlook client can talk directly to uh, Exchange and get those appointments directly, and that will bypass uh, the email router capability. So I hope that answered your question, Todd. If not, um, shoot me an email, and I'll add some more detail in there for you. All right, from Michael, can you change the from a lead to a contact in that grid? From a lead to a contact in that grid. So I'm assuming we are talking about the process flow UI on how it's moving from lead to contact or to account, and you can customize what you're showing in the fields that are in those in those process flows. Corey had shown uh, the ability to change what stages are next and what fields, et cetera. All right. When is on premise 2013 to be available? Chris? Hello? 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 You there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, okay. that's for some reason we went out there. Okay. Um, so it's called the fall release. 
Uh, so it could be anywhere from, you know, October through December. Uh, most people are predicting sometime around mid-October for that release to be available. Okay. And that's based on some of the uh, emails that we have for customers uh, looking at upgrades on CRM Online around October 15th. But we don't have an official date yet. Uh, has there been any changes to the lead qualification process? The lead qualification process. Um, I'm assuming that you mean when you change the lead to convert over to an account or opportunity. If, if that's what you're looking at, um, that's Alex. Uh, you, you know, again, you have the process flow UI. I think one of the things that I don't know if we've talked about yet, but make it clear for you guys is from the navigation, and the reason for the navigation changes has been based on feedback from a lot of sales users who were always trying to figure out, hey, I'm on a lead, I'm on a contact, I'm on an opportunity. You see those conversations disappear as you start using uh, CRM 2013. And the difference is, is that when you're in that record and the process flow UI is moving through, you can be adding, editing and changing fields that are across many different entities and filling it out. So the user is no longer jumping on and off to these different entities to determine whether or not they qualified the lead, so to speak, where you had to hit that action. Now it's available in the process. So um, I would say, yes, it is changed based on how you do it. Um, but you can still mimic what you had in the past. Okay. Um, from Kylie, you mentioned that ribbon customizations will be handled the same way and preserved. Is this the same for sitemap customizations? So sitemap customizations, um, you know, a lot of people are asking about that, and, and those customizations will definitely be moved over in the upgrade. As far as the editor, uh, I've heard stories of some people actually running the uh, sitemap editors that are available through the CRM 2013 interface and being able to modify how it sits. So I'm going to say that, yes, you can um, modify it, the sitemap the same way, uh, the same functionality as you would modify the ribbon as well. And if you needed to add workplace back in, for instance, you can do that. If you have your users trained to use that, that's been a common question as well. All right. Jay wants to know, can auto save be turned off? So there is a feature under settings that will allow you to turn auto save off. Um, this is purely uh, a setting that will allow people who have plugins that are firing on saves to work. Uh, we highly recommend that the uh, that you look at this as a design feature, and you know that feature is going to be deprecated. So the next version of CRM won't have that capability. So the quicker that you get used to autosave and change your plugins to fire, uh, that'll be uh, m that's my best advice to you. Um, I can also tell you that there are new features in the SDK that can tell you the state of that record, uh, so that when the plugin does fire, you can actually feed the plugin and let it know the current state. So there are some considerations to be made there. But uh, you, you can turn it off uh, in this version for a short period of time. All right, last few questions are in regards to Outlook. You mentioned Outlook 2013 would work. Is Outlook 2010 covered under support, and will it see all the new features as Outlook 2013? Okay, so Outlook 2010 is currently using the CRM 2011 client. It will use the CRM 2013 client. Um, the functionality that you see on the screen as far as the navigation, that's that navigation comes up through the website. As far as uh, what's not available in 2010 to 2013, uh, I don't have a list off the top of my head. I would say it'd be pretty slim based on the fact that Outlook Client is actually going out to CRM to gather information. So uh, I wouldn't expect a ton of differences between uh, 2010, no more than what you'd be able to see today between uh, Office 2010 and Office 2013. All right, and then does the Windows Mobile app integrate with Outlook? The Windows Mobile app does not integrate with Outlook today, so uh, you know I, I can see the, the understanding of that question and where you're headed. Um, those are some things that are that are definitely being looked at from a roadmap perspective for the future. They, it's been mentioned before. Um, I'm hoping that I've caught all these questions. Yeah, just a little bit about licensing as well. A lot of people ask about mobility. Um, that will also be included in your CRM online or your CRM on-premise licensing. So, you know, hats off to Microsoft for providing uh, those beautiful apps for us to use and play uh, out of the box. 
uh, you can, you know, mobility and uh, access is something that uh, they're taking very serious, and you're going to see an increased investment uh, in those areas to build the best uh, mobile capabilities for the salesperson on the run. Um, you know, your CRM 2013 license also includes the mobility, but it also includes a dev, a free dev instance or non-production instance. So all your licensed users in production will be able to access that dev instance as well. So those are some other changes coming to CRM Online. I think I might have one more that we did not cover. For a tablet running Windows 8 Pro, do you have the choice to run either the web app or Mocha? Absolutely. Um, you can run native Internet Explorer right from uh, the Windows 8 device, and you can use your finger on it. It, it works great. Um, I actually usually demo both, but we didn't have enough time today to do both. All right, and uh, I think the last question I had was in regards to um, a recording of this webinar. We are recording this webinar, and there will be a follow-up email where you'll be able to uh, click a link and, and see that. So I think that is it. We've got our last slide up with um, a little bit more information about us and how you can contact us if you have any further questions or concerns or um, in regards to upgrading and this major change that's happening with 2013 that we're all excited about. So uh, with that, I guess I'll pass it back to Jason. Okay. Well, I want to thank our speakers today, Corey, Chris, and Danielle. Thanks so much. And I want to thank everyone in the audience as well for, for attending today and for asking so many great questions. As Danielle said, we are recording the session, and uh, we'll be letting you know how to get access to that very soon. So thanks again for attending. Uh, be on the lookout for more sessions in the series coming up uh, throughout the fall, and have a great day.